doctor, for, for Professor Duke. His father was an orthodontist. So now we have the expertise of three generations. Last night I had the pleasure of, of having dinner with both doctors, Dr. Muse, we're sitting at the same table. Now I want you to sit back and think what Dr. Mike knew, what he experienced as a kid at the dinner table compared to us these days with our kids watching The Simpsons. <laughs> it was fascinating sitting there listening to some of his stories and the conversations we had and the development. So, and as you notice, I'm introducing our speakers in a very different way. I'm not reading their bios. You can do that all, all on your own. But we have a very personal connection here. Three generations of dentists, and we are now being, uh, are going to be introduced to Dr. Mike Mew, who's going to give us some current concepts. And I just want to ask you, did you have the pleasure of talking to your grandfather as well? No, no. Well, you know what? You have the pleasure of having your dad there, directing you all the way, and, yeah. and he was telling you about your grandfather. So. Thank you. <laughs> very good. Dr. Mew, come on up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. So... Yep. All the way up. i got to get the adapter. Is there audio with your presentation? No, no audio. No, audio? it's just slides. Okay, um, thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me, Edmund. Thank you very much for being here and listening to me. Um, I'll, I'm working on trying to take this concept that I inherited from my father and make it more applicable. The, there's an old phrase, who makes money? A dietitian or a liposurgeon? Because one drives a Ferrari, the other rides a bicycle. Preventing things doesn't make as much as fixing things. I think that an effective myofunctional therapist working for years with a child will probably gain a greater change in that child than a course of orthodontics that then relapses. But of course, my functional therapists make nothing in comparison with orthodontics. And one of the biggest stumbling blocks that has prevented orthotropics from becoming more mainstream is it's difficult. It's a really, really difficult technique because I don't get results. The children I work with, they get the result. I'm no more than a glorified coach. And I coach them to change. Do you want to go back to the beginning of the presentation? Yep. To just slide up to the top. Do you think so? Yeah, okay. Um, so my objective is trying to make this whole concept easier. Don't dim the lights, please. Just keep them up. There's no point. None of the slides need dim lights and people just go to sleep. It's a more interactive experience with the lights up. So my attempt has been to make this therapy more practical, more applicable, easier to teach, and yet still get the same results. And it's been a very hard process to try and achieve this. Now I'll check which way this goes. Yeah. So what I've, one angle of this approach has been with extra oral anchorage. So effectively a forward pull headgear. So I'm trying to see how to make it more predictable for the initial phase of the therapy, the preparation phase. Because if you get more change, it's easier for an individual to change. And the more I do this, the more I reduce the difficulty in this next training phase. 
So orthotropics is in two phases, the initial preparation, changing the structure so that people can change their posture and with function and with that posture. And then I can reduce the compliance issues and improve the results. That was the thinking behind this. Now it's worth mentioning that I've also spent some time trying to understand what we're all talking about. Because we've had a lot of talk about pain, sleep, a range of different things. But what's the um, underlying concept? What is this problem that we're treating? Because unless you start defining the problem, unless you start giving it a name and identify it, how do we have a proper diagnosis? So I've called this concept, or this problem, craniofacial dystrophy. We know that the faces are dropping down and back, and that's leading to problems. That concept of the face dropping down and back is craniofacial dystrophy. Um, so I wrote a, a publication in the British Dental Journal that's available. You, you can get that online. So just type in craniofacial dystrophy and you'll find that in uh, the BDA is based on the Nature website. So if you type Nature and that, you'll find it. And I introduced the term upswing or a downswing. So I say the face will upswing or the face will downswing. Um, because the main objective is to gain an upswing in facial form. That's the underlying goal if you're going to try and cure the underlying problems. Now I know we've gone through a lot of great techniques for making people healthier within the same craniofacial form. Now I'm saying let's try this is a different approach and we're going to try and actually change the craniofacial form and cure the underlying problem. Because a face that isn't the right shape doesn't work very well. And if you can improve the architecture that has evolved over millions of years to be that shape and functions well, then you'll probably improve all of the functions of that structure. And there's a lot of functions within the face. So this is based on the tropic premise that we've discussed. There, so teeth together in, as Simon terms, a butterfly bite, the lips together, tongue in the roof of the mouth. I like to add in with good body posture and good muscle tone. A little bit more added. So the principles is a preparation phase and then a training phase. So initially we try to train to structure, form follows function. Then we try to change the function posture. Posture is function over time. Oh. So I was influenced by Matani in Japan. I went down and saw this, this contraption he puts on people. He's got some couple of really good adult changes. So I thought, I want to learn. You know, I want to go out and learn from anyone I can. And I, learned from, I, I went and saw what he was doing. He gave me some information. I then had a patient coming in who was being treated by Dean Howell with the face max. And so I met up with Dean Howell. And I was influenced by the face max. And I developed this for a patient. And I presented this in Vancouver at the last meeting, um, North American meeting. And the idea is that it pulls in two separate directions so that the resultant force is up and forwards. A resultant that you couldn't actually get as a direct force. There had to be the resultant of two separate forces that you could apply. Uh, this was the initial head brace and it was sort of integrated to the hat, was stuck onto the hat. Now, the problem, my father showed you some images and this is what I would have considered ideal many years ago. So I would have effectively uncovered 
unmasked the increased vertical. So I've rearranged the upper teeth in arrangement to the maxilla and the lower teeth in arrangement to the mandible. And now I've just got to close the MM angle and I've got a good result. We also, by creating this anterior open bite, we corral the tongue. So the tongue, you have to become a tongue thruster. We made everyone tongue thrusters, then took the power of that tongue, put it up on the palate, moved the face forwards. If you're going to make lots of space, you don't worry about making tongue thrusters. You want them to be tongue thrusters, because if you've got enough space, it's not a problem. Tongue thrusters are only a problem, whatever tongue thrusting is, if you don't have enough space. But the problem was, in doing that, you often broke lip seal, and I frequently think we made the facial form worse. So we actually were damaging the lip posture in trying to achieve that. Because this is our overall objective. We've got to take the dentition in an upswing. We've got to move the whole face up and forwards. So again, an upswing in craniofacial form. We measured this with the indicator line some people might be familiar with. So here's the indicator line, which I'm calling A. And here's the final indicator line B. So if I toggle between, you can see the objective of treatment. And I know the nose isn't a perfect place, but it's the easiest, the best, and it gives you a fairly good estimation or indication of what's happening. Hence, indicator line. So, how do we go about achieving this? We well, usually, as I showed you in that previous slide, we move the upper anterior segment up and forwards, the lower anterior segment down, creating this anterior open bite. Well, that's the theory, but I think often what we're doing is getting an extrusion of the posterior segment. So we're actually increasing the vertical height because that bloke Newton wasn't wrong. There's an equal and opposite reaction. And of course, the easiest direction for teeth to move is extrusion. It requires the least force. And these are all vertical growers. They all, they're all down swinging anyway, or they wouldn't have come in at eight years old or younger to see me. If you're only treating young patients, you're only going to be treating the severe malocclusions. The only reason they're ever going to worry enough for eight to come and see me is because they've got a big problem, not a small problem. Now, if I could oppose that unwanted reciprocal force with some extra oral traction, then I'd prevent half of my problems and I might even gain positive facial change in that first phase of therapy. And even move that posterior segment up and with that the anterior segment and then get an alter rotation of the mandible so move that mandible up and forwards. So gain less of that anterior open bite not break the lip seal and effectively have done half the work for me with a mechanical solution that doesn't, well, it's not as difficult. Most of the patients coming in to see me, or all of them, that they're motivated. They're ready to put in some hard work and effort. But changing posture is an incredible, dif incredibly difficult thing to do. It's incredibly difficult. But wearing a head brace at night, we aim for 12 hours. They can physically do that. It's not for a massive amount of time. And that makes it easier then to change their posture later, which is the harder thing to do. So, this is what we developed. And the idea was that we had a force coming up at the front a force pulling forward, and then we had this long face bow. So I made this the maximum extension, and we had a force coming here. This looks like it's coming back a little bit. I would bend it at here at some point, and as it swings down, this will become a more vertical force. But the resultant is a force up and forwards, and of course this rotational element 
to the resultant force because of the length out here and the fact your six is around here somewhere. Um, I started this about three, four years ago. And this is a case I want to illustrate. So I want to illustrate him because he was an appalling patient. He really was. He did, he, he was terrible all the way through. His, his mum was too nice. He had the most wonderful mother that did absolutely everything for him. But we didn't start for six months after this. I recommended we were going to need two cycles of treatment because he was quite difficult. And I was suspicious we were going to lose teeth right at the wrong moment, which is precisely what happened. At the end of that first phase of therapy, well, we finished a little bit early because he lost his appliances and he wasn't wearing them well. We went through to um, some training, um, six, seven months of the training appliance that was completely ineffective. He never wore it at all. But while he wasn't wearing that training appliance, he was wearing this headgear. Ineffectively, I probably every other night, remember all my appliances that I really want people to wear, I've got a timer in them. I'm not going to trust anyone. And I couldn't do my orthotropics without the theramone timing system. Or you've, you've got this other one in the States now as well. But I must have a timer and everything. So I must know what's actually happening or you're at a loss. <coughs> now, here's the before, the before and after. Well, it's mid-treatment. We're still continuing. Although I've threatened to throw him out three times now. <laughs> and they just coast him. He'll just do what's required and then drop back down again. But, so I want to now try and understand what's happened between these two points. So I'm coming up with a concept of superimposing photographs. We know that there's a huge inaccuracy with KEPs. And we seem to just sort of forget about that and think this is a standard of treatment. There's far, far less inaccuracy with photographs. You can focus them. And we take them from about 15 feet away. So we're taking good photographs under very standardized conditions. So I, do, I make one of them a 50% um, transparency. I put them on top of each other, overlaid on the tragus, rotate them around so that I'm more or less superimposing on the um, gabella, nasian, and eyes. And it's amazing how this isn't that stable when you're looking at it now. But I've really put it over the tragus. And we've not actually had a bad growth pattern. It is not easy to affect growth positively. It really isn't. And this isn't with that difficult training appliance that everyone struggles with. This is with an extra oral headgear. So here is a terrible patient who's done everything wrong, who I've made quite a reasonable benefit from. Remember, I've got a lot of expansion without any extrusion, which is normally what you get when you're doing a lot of expansion. Now, if anyone here has got a series of kefs and a series of photographs, I'd love to do some research on this method of superimposing faces. Yeah, anyone come have a chat or send me an email. Huh? And we can just match them up, because it, it you know, it, it's, a, it's a nice idea. You know, we should be doing that. But you see how much more tongue space I've achieved for him without any vertical increase. In fact, we've net got a net forward growth. I would imagine his growth direction has been really quite good during that phase. And now he can wear this hybrid appliance at night plus probably one or two hours. So I've now got him into a position where I can apply a much, much easier type of treatment that's not going to be as stressful and as difficult for him, although he's still struggling with that, but there we go. We'll see. I will, again, I'll keep that updated. Now, the other problem with orthotropics is that we are really limited to the very young patients. 
And my idea with this head brace, since I'd seen Matani had got some older, he got some adults treated, was could I, using this head brace, take orthotropics into a progressively older and older category? Because if I could do that, then we really do have something to talk about. Always the problem has been the patients turn up too late. And because we're treating so much earlier, it's very difficult to actually compare cleanly orthotropics to orthodontics. Whereas orthodontics is treating lots of 15, 16 year olds. That's the bread and butter. And clearly many patients are never told they're going to need extractions or surgery as he was until he was 15. And I used to turn these people away to a dozen. So he turns up and he's hyper motivated. He's facing surgery, he's facing extractions. He's found me on the internet. It's not his parents that have found me, he's found me. And he swears he will work really hard. So we do the preparation phase of therapy, which seems, you know, we get a reasonable growth direction. And then just before I left, I managed to quickly take this photograph. And that's a year's worth of treatment. And the growth direction for him, stunning, really. And we really haven't got going with that training appliance yet. We only just started with that training appliance. And that mandible seems to have come straight forwards. Now it's difficult in these superimpositions to really appreciate the maxilla. Well, it's almost impossible to appreciate the maxilla from a kef. Look at Bjork's work. So kef was just, you know, no chance of seeing the kef. The head posture changes are so hard when they superimpose. It was so far back, I made his chin further forward, now, now he's upright. It's still forward, but... Uh... Well, that's why I'm trying to take this on the tragus and the nasion area. But remember, if you'd got the kef, you just wouldn't notice that as much. You might see a little bit of, you know, the um, cervical vertebra move a little bit. But we just, it's not as, you, you don't... When you're working on a kef, first you forget the inaccuracy of taking the kef. Then you forget the inaccuracy of measuring the kef. And then you forget it's a person. These photographs, is that's accurate. And I think that's going to be far more accurate than doing cephalometric tracing. And of course, there's no ionizing radiation from a cath. You can take them all day long. Um, and you can see this, it, we've had a dramatic change with him. And those foreheads are almost perfectly parallel. Well, they were, they were perfectly parallel. I've just moved that forwards from the superimposition. And you've got a really nice change in the mandibular structure and to some degree, a little bit, in that maxillary area. You can appreciate that maxilla's come forward a bit. And I think we'll get continued forward development of that maxilla as we go. And he has a lot more tongue space. A huge amount more tongue space. So then I get Lorena come in. She's 17 years, 10 months. She's very committed. She drives a long way to see me. I, I know the distances are different here than they are in the UK. But she drives literally from the other end of England, almost as far as you can go on the top left-hand side of England, just before you reach Scotland. And she comes down every two weeks for appointments. And she's super committed. So there was a slightly newer version of the headgear. We're progressively developing it here. And we gain a little bit of an anterior open bite, clearly or less anterior open bite than I was getting with the other previously, before I started using the headgear. I'm not wanting to open it up as much. But I want to get a little bit, because I don't want any incisal interference as I start developing them forwards. I want to get a little bit of that tongue thrust. 
I want to get change. And change in function is much easier when you get this change in structure because it reminds them permanently to do it. And there's a comparison and it is, she looks so much better than she was and yet in the cold, cool light of day it's, it's not as easy to see that. Really is not as easy to see that. Her maxilla definitely has come forward but that's not really showing. So then we get Daphne come in. Now Daphne's 27 and a half. Now that no one would have attempted orthotropics on someone that age. But you know, I've, I'm trying. Because this is our big market here. She's had extractions. She feels her face has been damaged from the orthodontics she had. And she's willing to work very hard. And she's traveling in from Spain every two weeks to see me. And it looks like we gained a nice change. She's now wearing the training appliance. So there's a little less than a year of preparation and a year and three months to get that. Now you can't really see that maxilla. But no one is going to tell me that was the way she would have grown naturally. She's 27. She's not growing. And these are the types of changes people are trying to get in their mandibular splints. And we've only done a year and three months. So if we carry on with this, with that huge amount of tongue space increase, and continue to get her changing her posture and function, we should continue to get change. We're only limited by ourselves. I could change anyone here's facial form, any one of you, predictably, and quickly. If I was just to cut the facial and trigeminal nerves, what would happen? Get sued. Well, I, I, I promise you I'd get it well. I'll get you to sign your life away. For every one of you, and we could do a beautiful split mouth experiment or split face experiment. But I know predictably and precisely and repeatedly and to a large amount one side of your face would drop down in every single one of you. We know that. So what's stopping the face moving up and forwards? You. That's what's stopping it. But we're creatures of habit and we're creatures of comfort and we're driven by the comfort and how we feel comfortable. You're all sitting comfortably. Why? It's what we want to do. And unfortunately, most of you have had a reduced tongue space. And because you've got a reduced tongue space, you tend to rest with your tongue slightly between the teeth, head slightly forwards. And if you were to correct that, put your tongue on the roof of the mouth, stand up properly, the back of your tongue is going to be in your airway. So, you have on one side the angel saying, stand up straight, lips together, teeth together, tongue on the roof of your mouth. And you have the devil on the other side saying, breathe. <laughs> now, I am male and I know that I can only think about one thing at a time badly think about one thing at one time and very quickly I'll forget anything else that isn't in that line of focus now some of you might do better but can you really think about your physical body posture 
for more than a couple of percent of the day and none of the night. And to try and maintain an uncomfortable body posture is going to be almost impossible. And this is why it's difficult to change. But I think you can see that she had maxillary improvement. The difference when you meet her is staggering. Like staggering. And as far as I'm aware of, she is the best non-surgical adult change I have ever heard of. That is currently state of the art. Now, I've been getting particularly good results with class threes. But I was concerned that I was getting a slight increase in this um, lower indicator line. Now, the hardest thing in the world is to throw something that you've worked for three years into the bin and start again. That is phenomenally difficult. I've evolved this and I've really tried, I've gone further and further and further back to try and stop that dropping down at the front. But that Newton bloke is still correct. Einstein might have had something to say about him, but he's pretty strong really. But I then looked around and I took some inspiration from the crane. So the crane is avoiding this reciprocal force by going to the neck. But I didn't like the pull of the crane. Oh. So the pull of the crane is pulling downwards and forwards. It's like the delayer. Pulling downwards and forwards. You know, I don't want that downward. I want up and forward. And I want that rotational element I learned from um, Mitani. So I've taken all the elements and I've tried this. I, I'm going for a smaller size than normally recommended because this is a little bit big if you see for her. But it's got all those elements there. Got all the elements, but it's not now going to retract the mandible. If anything, it's going to push the mandible up and forwards. Now, so my 10 year project has been to improve orthotropics by at least 50% reduce the burnout and time by 50%, increase the remuneration by at least 100%, and consistently achieve the best results. I do not care how long it takes me. I don't care. Not interested. I don't care how little I will make from a case as I'm developing this. I have to be number one. That's the objective. You win the 100 meters Olympics, People remember you. People will follow the scientific protocol. You do. They don't need uh, RCT. If Usain Bolt gives out what his diet is, a million people will follow that diet. And now I also want to push back the age group by any means possible. I need to try anything. And I need to work a bit more on body posture and other things. I want to do this with scientific rigor, recording and publishing. I'm not going to publish yet because I need to get more data in. Then I want to create this short feedback loop. You see how hard it is to make assessment of whether I've got change. It's quite a difficult thing to do. So how do I know on a day-to-day -day basis if I'm making someone better or worse? You can in orthodontics because you can see the teeth moving. But trying to appreciate change is much more difficult. So I have a David scanner. Now, you can see what this is, an old x-ray arm. So I've got and found an old x-ray arm, and I've done a bit of jiggery-pokery. That took me six months in there. And I've got there, and you can see a face in glorious three dimensions. It's gone to sleep, anyway. <laughs> now, so that's my project, and we will be getting going with those. Because if I can short down that feedback loop, if I can get it down to three months, then I'm not in that position where I say to people, oh, well, the treatment's going like this. I'm in the position where I turn around to them and say, what's happening? What are you doing? Why is your face not going up? If you don't make your face going up, you're out of here. Because that's how it should be. 
I don't want people coming to me at the end of the treatment saying, why didn't you get a good result? When parents ask me, oh, why is Johnny's teeth not straight? I'll go, I'll just ask, Johnny, why are his teeth not straight? What are you doing, man? Get him straight! I'll, oh, I don't know, Mum, you know, we'll see what we can do. So that's how it should be. It's not for you to straighten the teeth or make the faces grow well. Our ancestors, for millions of years, did that without any help. There's 5,400 species of mammal out there getting perfectly straight teeth without an orthodontist, not wearing retainers. Well, what, what are you trying to do straightening these teeth for them? You're going to do the homework for them? Where does it stop? And then you're going to hold the teeth in retention out of the balance zone. How long will that bone supporting the teeth remain out of the balance zone? Think about that for a second. What are you doing to those teeth if you've expanded, taken the teeth out of the balance zone, but you haven't changed that balance zone, you've not influenced the posture and function? What's going to happen in the long term? Okay, so I will go through a few cases. Lovely result. Lovely result. Yeah. Ooh, got a much better photo of him now. Really has come on to treat. Another lovely result. You know, I could sit here and do this. That's a lovely result. She was told she was going to have to work till 18 and have surgery. Think how much worse she would have got. What would have her life been? She was told by one of the top, she's got a letter from one of the top specialists in the country saying, nothing we can do. But her mum is as hard as nails. Oh, I love mums like that. No, Polly, you are going to do this. <laughs> she wore one of those head braces at school. Well, look, you know, what was she, six? Six years old, she'll cry for the first day. Second day, she doesn't notice. I'm turning out to be a little bit of a tough daddy, I'm finding. Anyway, I mean, but now I've got another photograph of her, and she now looks, she doesn't look okay. She looks really good. Really good. Now, had she had surgery, had she had some form of other correction, she might have looked, they've got her looking okay. They wouldn't have got her looking really good. Now, so in this drive to make everything better, we've changed that old training appliance. I don't know how many of you are familiar with it. It's got those um, four extensions, one, two, three, four, around there. Basically, the concept is, if I had terrible body posture and I spent all my time hanging it like this, and someone was trying to remind me and I kept forgetting, if I lent you a great big belt with a spike that came to here, bam, bam, you'd change. It's not, it's not complex, it's just difficult. Ask a physio how easy it is to change body posture. It's not easy, but it's possible. So I've taken some oaths, all right? This is gonna be a tough road to follow. Um, information should, in principle, be free, all right? If anyone wants one of my slides, I'm probably not gonna download the whole presentation off the go, but if you want a slide, have it. If you want one of these facial images, have it. Basically, I will open up my entire books to anyone who ever asks, ever. Because if someone doesn't take this position, who else is going to do it? I'm not going to sit here, this is mine, sorry. You can't have it. You're going to pay. You want some money? Yeah, that's money. No, have it. Everything is free. That is science. That is the way forward. You can't sit there and hold it all to yourself. That's not scientific. I will leave no stone unturned in my efforts to find the answers, however weird and wonderful. Because they think we're weird and wonderful, those, the establishment. How am I to say that, that guy down the road there, who's a patient, isn't, hasn't come up with a clever idea? How do I know that? I must check it out. I must look at it. I must put it through the scientific process. You know, these didn't come up, did someone magically invent this overnight? This technology happened through the scientific process. And I must follow this process wherever it leads. Throwing out ideas that I've spent years and years working on. A sweat and tears making that head brace, binned it. 
moved on. Because that's what the science seemed to say to me. I will have to review it, balance against a new idea. Then I'm going to have to remain permanently open to debate on the best way to get change. And to help most people in the shortest possible time and keep my goddamn ego in check. It's good to have an ego. That drives you forwards. That gives you the confidence to do things. But if you, you know, you've got to sit down and go to other people's courses. You can't isolate yourself in a silo and only go to your own courses. That is the danger. It's too easy when you come up here and you think, Phew, mate, yeah. everyone's looking at me, hello. Then someone asks you a question and you think something. You have a hunch and you say it as if it's true. Because everyone's glorifying you, because you're the big I am. That is dangerous. And that's what you've got to stamp out. And that's what I've got to be. If anyone thinks I'm going, my ego's getting, just tell me. Okay, so a quick once through the hybrid system. I realize orthotropics is a really difficult thing to do. Okay? So what can we do to make things a little bit easier as an introduction? Uh, something you can come and learn on a weekend course. Right, hybrid system. So this is mixing it, expansion and training all in one appliance. Here we go, Mary. That's a difficult case. We did uh, um, some pre-expansion on her. And yeah, but nice result. But then we needed to do more. And I, I didn't want to then put her in the hole through the whole orthotropic. So I said, let's have a go with this hybrid system. And I would say overall, is not being perfectly, she, she was a great vertical grower. Oh, well, that's a jump. But we've got a really nice change. Yeah, we've got a nice change if we go back. And her, sorry, I didn't cap, grab the dentition just before I went. I just grabbed a few extra slides before I went. So I haven't taken her teeth before we went. But fairly nice growth. And here was Emily. And you can see how with Emily, we've got a huge amount of expansion. And the teeth have naturally aligned herself. She wears this appliance for an hour before she goes to bed and nighttime. You can do it more or less anyone who's <clears throat> class one, a little class two, a little class three. The teeth aren't going to line themselves up perfectly, but you're widening them. Now, I imagine there's a lot of people here who are widening people, and they're not changing the posture and function dramatically. So they're moving the teeth out the balance zone, but they're not moving the balance zone. And then you're going to hold people permanently out of the balance zone. Well, this appliance, it's going to change the balance zone. All night long, when they try and drop, it's going to hurt. They're going to change their resting mandibular posture, which raises up where the tongue's attached, or one of the major tongue attachments is going to improve their resting muscle tone, it will change them. So this is a sensible way to expand someone and gently over time, at a very slow rate of expansion, you gain an improvement. Um, so we, we don't, with the specifics of it, you have to work seven hours a day minimum and until it's very effective, we call it L1. As soon as it's only one millimeter you drop down and those fangs touch your soft tissue, then you can start widening. Because then you know you've got that box, the box around the tongue in a controlled environment. Then you can widen it. Now, the future. So, I've, clearly, I'm going to leave low stone unturned. There's a guy called Juan Moon who's in um, UCLA, and he's using mini screws on rapid palatal expanders and really loosening up that maxilla. And the maxilla is coming forwards. So imagine if you're the head, the cranium's a circle, and those two maxillas are sort of pyramidal or on a cross-section triangular bones, as you move them sideways, they're going to come forwards. Bjork showed that. Bjork showed it well with good implants in the good old days when you could do proper research and bang implants into people's faces. 
Apparently, they're still suing the hospital now. Um, so he's putting screws in the roof of the mouth and this frame, and he's, this is using CBCT. He's getting some real nice forward maxillary change. And he's using a Delaire face mask. So if I see if I can bang in my new neck gear, well then, and I hash this up with a few more ideas going on in here, quite a few more ideas going on in here, I know I can really ramp this up. I can really, really ramp this up. And of course, we've got Marianne Evans in Pennsylvania, who's doing something similar. So I'm in contact with these people. I'm going to draw on them. This is science. This is making networks, bringing people in, being open about what you're doing. And yet we've only really just got going with this, or I've got it. Now, slightly on another aspect, a while ago in Chicago, when I lectured at a North American group, I mentioned that I was going to get into social marketing and see if I could get some things to go viral. Well, I think that I was a bit lucky. First, this is clearly something that people want to hear about. I did not expect to get the reception I got. I mean, type Mike Mew is God into the internet and see some of the crazy images that come up. I mean, it just, it literally freaks me out. It freaks me out. But I've got things to go viral. I've got videos out there that have been seen a quarter of a million times. A lot of videos being seen, 100,000, 60,000, 50,000, and we're just putting things out there. Now, I did this by myself. I didn't really get the, that reception I was hoping to get at that meeting. A few people did give me emails, but if we could really get more people together, if I could get advocates and fans. Now, another advantage was that my brother was in charge of IBM social media. I, I, he was, gave me a few tips and hints that were useful, and I had a couple of helpful people as well with me at the time. So we did, when we built the social media thing, and we've still got it. It's kind of been on the coolers for nine months while I've been focusing on other things. But I did most of that by myself. Now, if I were to work with all of you, it's crazy what we'd achieve. We really it would be crazy what we'd achieve. Um, Victoria, do you mind standing up for a second? If people could contact Victoria here, I've got a rough job. I've got to go and live, get a lecture in Denver in an hour or two. But Victoria's still going to be here. If you can give your name and details, if you're interested, because you'd, I'm sure many of you have got Facebook pages. Many of you are having to come up with ideas to post. It's difficult to come up with ideas of things to post on Facebook. But if you give me one or two posts, I'll post those posts. And I'll give you one or two of ours. And then we take one from you, and we take one from you, and before know it, we have got an unbelievable social media concept. And you know what? You don't have to totally agree with exactly everything people are doing, because it's a broad trend. We're all doing things that are interesting, and we all know that this information must vitally get out there. And simple, you know, if you can't think of anything, you must have put something on your website already. You've probably got a few things you, that never went on your website. You've probably written an editorial for a local newspaper. You've got the story of a few patients, the story of how you got into doing what you're doing. You can make a video post on it. You know, it, it's, it's limitless what you can put up there. And of course, when we're talking, if you want to have the minimum effort, become an advocate. We'll give you a little program to download. We'll send you, that will upload with posts and you can decide yes or no. That's all you have to do, yes or no, on your mobile phone. Spend five minutes every week. It's amazing how you can automate all this stuff if you know what you're doing, which is useful, I'm getting some good advice. But also, you've got those fans. How many of your patients? How many of those, you know, Steve showed some wonderful patients are so satisfied, I am sure they'd be happy. They're more than happy to pump stuff out.
It's a really good angle. Previous, for, for 50 years my father's been saying these things. Previously, the way was blocked. The only channel was through the profession. That's gone. We've got our own channels now. That's social media. Make a channel, become a star. Although some of the, some of the stars on YouTube that my daughter finds, are, <laughs> it's very worrying. Um, and I, I would love some assistance. So if anyone here would actually like to take a more active role, I just need one or two people. If you want to take a more active role, you could really, really help with this. You could help us all. If you know, know a bit of technology, you don't even know have to know much technology. Now, so where next? So we're going to be organizing hybrid courses. But anyone who wants to come and visit me, I want to try and cut down the cost of people coming to just visit and watch my clinic and watch what we're doing to as low as I can. So you can come in, don't get in the way too much, and see what we're doing. If you're going to pop into London, come and have a look. London's fairly easy to get to. Plan a holiday around. Let's have a look. If you want to get involved in some research, join the fun. Clearly, this is massive. Sleep medicine, yeah, that's important. Straight teeth, yeah, that's important. But do you realize how many people phone my receptionist on a daily basis wanting to know when I'm going to take on adults? I've, I've not been taking on adults. I took a few on that I've trialed. But it's got out on the internet. And so many people are phoning up that my receptionist is complaining about the amount of time it's taking to answer their calls, say, no, Dr. Mew is not taking patients, any the adults at the moment. Try again in six months' time. It's taking physical amount of time. The demand for this is unbelievable. How many people out there want to look better? How much money is spent on just makeup? It, this market is crazy. And of course, I've got that mandibular advancement without any traction. My worry about mandibular advancement splints, of course, is you can retract the maxilla. What are the health outcomes of making people's face look better? Well, I think your face is the CV of your health. Make the face look better, I think you're making people look healthy. You know, when I come back with a nice tan and, you know, I've been working on my raw posture, people go, Mike, you're looking healthy. I go, hey, you mean I look good, don't you? <laughs> health, attractiveness, it's the same thing. It's synonymous. And I achieved that in one year, three months. It was hard work, but I know I can get, I can get, I get ten times as good as that. I know I will. I've got all the, I've got I've so many ideas, yes. Can you remind us, did you use uh, the hybrid and some extra oral anchorage in that case? No, I didn't use the hybrid on this case. On this case, I use a kind of modified version of standard orthotropics. But I know if I get in here with um, maxillary implants, or TADs, if I really get that um, headgear working well, if I've got, I've got a load of great ideas, if I can get some other people like a physiotherapist on board, if I can get some several, several other things, I, I, I'm going to kick, kick ass. I know I am. Go on. On social media, I see people always talking and asking, are you viewing? Yeah, this is, this is I mean, yeah. So I've, I've put some exercises online and this is because people are calling it mewing. So it's, if you're not mewing, what you're doing? And I used to have um, Google searches on my name. I, don't, I can't be bothered. So many people are talking about what I'm doing. And it's interesting. I'll get a patient coming in, and they'll say, I want that. I don't want to work hard, but I want to get that. And I'll go, well, it's hard work. And you go, oh, I don't know how hard this work. Next person comes in as a bodybuilder. And I go, well, you're going to have to work hard. It's going to take you 10 years, and very slowly you'll make an improvement. He goes, well, it took me 10 years to get this. Don't mind if I spend 10 years to get a good face as well. You know, it's, it's a different... You've got to think about this differently. Now, 
If you're interested in the courses, I haven't got them up. We're trying to regain access. Since I changed my marketing team, I've kind of lost, there's some bits of the website that we're struggling to get into at the moment. But we will have new courses up in the near future. We're going to have simple courses. My recommendation, we're going to have some simple courses and you can come and visit me at the clinic. You can contact me. And then don't forget that in the 6th of September 2018, we're going to organize a big conference for his 90th birthday. I mean, this is a nice turnout, but sorry, I've been to the AAO, and this is not a patch on the AAO. And who's really doing the health benefit for people? We are. Sorry, we're the scientific ones. We're not charlatans. Well, look for charlatans, fool, look in the other direction. Why aren't we the size of AAO? We need to be. Now, I'm asking also for people to give some donations so I can get some seed funding to make this presentation big. Again, come and see Victoria. I'm asking for quite a few people have given $100 pledges so far. We're not taking cash today, but if you can give $100 pledges, it would be greatly appreciated. Then finally, Simon, were you going to go pass me up? Well, wonderful, thank you very much. I did bring a few of these. I'd prefer cash. Um, but they're on the NAAO site, and I recommend you, if you're, in, if you're in America, do join the NAAO. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm dyslexic, I'm not really good at that sort of thing. Especially acronyms, I, I lose them some. But, um, you know, there's, um, as well as, of course, joining the, um, that one as well, yeah. <laughs> AACP, you know, clearly you want to join that one as well, but, you know, join something. Um, anyway. Thank you very much. Um, any questions, I'll be outside. Or we can, we have got time for questions, Brian? 16 seconds, 17 seconds. No, we're going the other way now. I've gone over. Okay, thank you very much. Good job. Good job. This is the king of enthusiasm for orthotrophics. <laughs> You're listening to here. Thank you, Mike, for a great presentation. And I hope you all uh, write down that September 6th date and really consider coming because it's going to be a historic meeting with both John and Mike Mew there, John's 90th birthday, September 6th, 2018. So keep it in mind. Thank you again, Mike. Congratulations. This is for you. Cheers. Let's take a picture. Bobby from Miller. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>